All right. So um, we're going to be talking about SORA, which is the Lancaster School District's digital library program, and what you could do with it or um, what kids have access to do with it. So um, on your class link, the icon doesn't actually say Sora, it says Overdrive. So you'll notice on my class link, there's two overdrives. It doesn't matter which one I click into. Um, when I click in, if you're logged into your Google account, it'll take you right into to Sora. One of the first things most kids have to do is say, find my school. Um, if your school's not listed, you could just type in the school name. I'm going to say this is my school. Lancaster School District. And then sign in. If the kids have already signed in on a device, it'll take them into it repeatedly. If they stay signed in, it'll just keep taking them into it. Worst case scenario, they just have to say Lancaster School District or one of their school sites. They could search by their school site and come in. Once they're in, they have several options. One is they can just kind of browse. They can look around at like collections. So they could look at like most popular books and see what other kids are checking out. So they can go through and see what other kids are checking out, things like that. The problem with doing it that way is that um, they're going to see everything, whether or not it's at their reading level or interest level. So one of the first things that kids might want to do um, is to search for a book. If they click search for a book, they can put in a book title or they can come down to advanced search right here and they can change several things. They could change and look by their Lexile. So if they know their Lexile, they might say, I'm looking for a book that's in the 800 to 1000 range. Okay. Um, so any change they make here, if they have their Atos level, interest level, text difficulty, they could go by grade level. I'm looking for a grade eight book and they can search that way. Okay, that will then force the books that come up to be more on their, their grade level or, or level that they're looking for a book. Uh, they can look for different languages. So if they wanna find a Spanish book or English book or different languages, they can select change languages. They can also search by subject. If they're looking for a specific type of book, they can come in and search by subject as well. So any change in here, when they click on search, it'll make those changes. So I'm gonna come in just to show you what it looks like and I'm gonna change my text difficulty to say first grade. And then I'm gonna search. Now you'll notice that what I'm seeing is just all pretty much first grade books and things that a first grader might be interested in reading or about their reading level. So it's a nice, easy way to make that, that change. I'm gonna exit that out so that I'm not seeing uh, just first grade and I'm seeing kind of all the different, different books again. So they could search for a vi variety of different things. I always said teaching the kids to do that makes it a little bit easier when they're searching for a book. They just go to advanced search, make sure it's at their reading level or their Lexile score or Atos level or whatever you want them to search by and then search for those books. There are read along ebooks. So if you're if they're doing uh, not at a reading level, the one but are doing read along books, they can just search for those as well. They just check that and that's what will show up. They could search for just available books. Okay, that means that the books are, will be readily available for them to borrow. And, and so that's there. And so they can make any of those changes, search, and then come out to find a book. Now, uh, let me go back to the categories or collections here real quick and go into most popular. When the kids are looking for a book, a couple things they might see. One is if it says borrow, that means they can borrow it right now. They can add it to their digital library right now and borrow it. If it says place hold, that means that the copies, the digital copies the school district has are currently all checked out. Just like if you walked into a real library, the books are checked out. They can see 
oops, there I placed it a hold. It's on my wait list. Okay. Um, so I'm wait listed right now for that one. Um, they can see how long that time period is going to be by looking at this clock. That's there. It's expecting about one week. 11 copies in use. There's one person waiting. So they're suspecting that a copy would be available if I placed the hold on it in about a week. You'll notice that sometimes that could be longer. This one here is about four weeks time period to get because it's a more popular book. You'll notice that there, the more symbols with the clock, the longer the wait is. So this one here is an unknown wait. Zero copies in use, 12 people waiting. So if there's zero copies in use, they're going to be waiting a long time. Um, this one, oops, place hold, not what I wanted to do. That one here was a shorter wait, okay? Um, if it says borrow, they can check it out right away. So I want to come down to an actual book here, not a audio book. Some of them are audio books. You'll see the headphones right there. That means an audio book so the kids could actually just listen to the book. I want to find a middle school oh, I want to come out of this most popular and look at uh, available now okay so a lot of the uh, audio books are popular uh, but let's say I wanted to find a regular book I can click borrow and that gets added to my digital library it'll also open up right away Okay, if you click on borrow, it's going to open up right away. It takes a second to download, and then it works just like a book. Kids can use their arrows on their computer and just thumb from one page to the next. Okay, I'm going to close this up for a second. I'll come back into it. So when you borrow it, it goes to your shelf. This book is now on my shelf. It's there if I want to read it. It's due in 20 days. Okay, I can open it from my shelf. And I can look at options right here from my shelf. These are the options. I can renew it. So in 20 days, if I haven't finished it, I can click renew and renew it. I can return it if I'm done with it. Okay. Um, I can mark as done. I can add it to a list. Kids can make lists. Um, these are things that you currently have loaned out. This is one I borrowed. Things that I placed holds on are right here. Those are the books that I placed holds. Again, you have options. I can cancel the hold. Be like, no, I checked out another book. I'm just canceling that hold. Or I can keep it on hold until it's available and I can read it. All right. So books that are on your shelf. Right here, this book's on my shelf. I'm going to open my book. When you have that book, you can turn page to page. Just like they're reading a book, okay? You'll notice that I have a two-page spread. I can change how that looks right here to a one-page or back to a two-page, depending upon what they want. If they come across a word that they do not know, like they're like, I don't know what that word means, the word immediately, I'm not sure what it means. If they click on it and hold it, they get these options. One is to define. If they click define, it comes up with a definition right away. That's what the word means. So they can look up any word that they're not sure what it means. They can just click, hold, and look up that word. Um, as a teacher, you could actually assign some activities with the kids in the book. Like you could have them say, find some character quotes or find a setting quote or things like that. So let's say they were looking for a particular quote. Um, let's see if we can find a quote here. So let's say I'm taking this right here. I'm going to highlight this whole quote right here. She was really terrible at fractions. Tells me something about uh, the character. And I'm going to highlight it. So I'm going to click highlight. And I can choose yellow, pink, 
or green. So the kids could highlight all the character quotes in green, all the setting quotes in yellow, all the words they don't know in pink. You could choose what you want them to highlight or what you want them to focus on. Let's say that they're reading a book and you want them to find um, figurative language, things like that. They could highlight that and put it in. They could take a note on any part of the book. They can click notes and enter notes to remind them of things. Okay. So all of that stuff they can do inside Sora as they're going through. What's really cool about that, when they come back out and they look at their options for that book, they can click on notes and highlights and see what it is they've highlighted. So if they're doing a book report or doing some information, it would all be right there for them to see. Okay. That also shows up, another place that, that it shows up, if they click on their me button down at the bottom here next to their shelf, they click on me, they can see how many books they've opened, how long they've read, the average time per book, how many, the longest streak and time per session, like how many days my current streak is one day. I have not been on here lately. So you could see all that information. They can win little, little badges, things like that in here. Okay, that's all on the the me tab, all of the stuff about them. And on their main tab down here, the home tab over here, it shows the books they have on loans. Their recently defined words, you'll notice immediately is here. That was a recently defined word. And I can see all defined words. So the kids can check, click this and see everything they've defined from way back in time all of their defined words, 25 definitions. Okay, those show up there. And recent notes and highlights are all right here and they can see all of their notes and highlights. Okay, so it's a nice easy way for kids to put information to remember about a book and have it in one place. So if you can look at it based on the book while you have it checked out, but even when the book's no longer checked out, you can see these old ones that I had. The book's no longer checked out. Your highlights are still there. So the book could be returned and they could still be doing the report with all their information right here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back home and I'm going to go into the book. And I've got this book that I'm here. I want to show you one other thing that's really important about this book. Up here at the top, this three star menu, a couple things you can do. Okay. Um, one of the ones I like to show is the reading settings right here. You can change the size of the text so depending upon your eyesight you can make it smaller or larger okay there's also accessibility sizes if they do that you can even make it larger so or extremely small so when the accessibility sizes is checked your options even get larger um, almost like a magnified book okay uh, there is different lighting so I can change it to different lighting, depending upon if you're reading, how you're reading, where you're reading, you can change the lighting of it. Um, and then there's different text styles down here. This is the publisher's default, but I can change it to a legible, a scholar, a paperback. And the reason I show this most often is the open dyslexic. This is a font for kids that, that are diagnosed with dyslexic or may have dyslexia, and you'll see it's kind of weighted so that the letters aren't supposed to move around in their in their visual, uh, the way they see the letters and stuff, it's supposed to be more weighted to keep them in place. So that's a good thing to know for kids that might be dyslexic in your class. Most of the time you'll just leave, leave it as a publisher's default, um, but those settings are kind of good to know that they're there, okay? Um, you can move to different chapters right here, so I can move to a different chapter just by clicking on the chapter. I can put in bookmarks, um, all my highlights and stuff that are bookmarked in there and things that I've I've done in the book. Um, and then I can also search within the book right here for certain things, key terms, things like that that I want to search for, okay? Um, so all of those things are in that three-dot menu from within the book, things that you can do. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. That's getting your book. The different things on the bottom here, your home tab shows you what books you have on loans, your recent defined books, things like that. It'll also pop up with books you might like based on other things you've checked out. Okay. Um, your explore tab lets you kind of look around at different books and, and look through the collections. 
explore. You can search for a book, all that on the explore tab. The shelf shows you books that are on your shelf as well as your um, your holds, lists, and activity. Okay, all that stuff is on your shelf. And the me tab on the bottom, it froze up on me. Restart it here real quick. The me tab down here shows information about the book and little achievements and things like that. So that is what Sora can do and, and what's available for you. You'll notice that I'm in the Lancaster School District Library. If you have an LA County Library card, you can actually add that in here too, a public library, and search through their books as well. So if you go get a, a public library, you can add that in and access their digital books, okay? So uh, enjoy, hopefully you learned something about Sora that might help you out. It is a great program to use with kids in the classroom. Um, to have them read and do different things. It is available for kids at home so that they can read on any device. The only key is they have to sign in through their Google account. That's how they see them. So they have to be logged into their Google account to access Sora. Um, so they can do that by going to ClassLink or logging into Google on a Chrome browser before they go into Sora. Um, remember on the ClassLink, it does show as OverDrive, right here, the OverDrive. Um, not Sora. So that's one thing to remember that when the kids are looking on their class link, they have to click on the overdrive. All right. Thank you very much.